season one of Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Prime Video deserves a one episode watch, whether you are a casual or target audience member. If you want to know how I came to that conclusion, stay tuned and I will go ahead and actually give you some reasons. And draw less attention as a couple. Very romantic. Mr. and Mrs. Smith is an action and comedy series that premiered in February of 2024. It premiered on Prime Video and actually has eight has eight episodes, roughly coming in about 50 minutes apiece. Now it stars Donald Glover as John Smith and Maya Erskine as Jane Smith. And then they actually have some supporting actors in there with appearances by Paul Dano, John Turturro, and Ron Perlman. The IMDb synopsis is, two strangers land jobs with a spy agency that offers them a lifetime of espionage, wealth, and travel. The catch? new identities and an arranged marriage. This series is a kind of reimagining of the 1996 TV series of the same name. And then the more popular 2005 movie starring Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Now, based on the series name, the trailers, and then a synopsis that I went and actually read, I am definitely a main target audience for this kind of series. I love most spy series that are out there. And the 2005 movie was one of my favorite movies of the last 20 years or so. So I am definitely one of the target audience members that they went ahead and actually were looking to go and actually watch this series. Now, why do I give you that perspective? Because you should always know your reviewer's perspective when going into hearing their review. I go and actually watch the first two episodes of brand new content out there to see if it's worth your time. I watch it so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor. Click like, share, subscribe. And now, let me get into this review for you. So before I actually went in to go and actually watch this, I just kind of wrote down some of my expectations of this particular series as coming from a target audience member. So for me, first and foremost, I had to go... I have to go and actually feel the attraction between the main two leads. It's one of the biggest things that was the draw in the 2005 movie. It wasn't as prevalent in the TV series in, in the 90s, but definitely in that 2000, uh, 2005 movie, there's got to be some strong attraction there. Two, got to have some good action and some spy craft in there, whether we're talking about hand-to-hand -hand combat, whether we're talking about like some cool gadgets or weaponry or anything like that. Um, maybe some little espionage, little... Uh, Mission Impossible type deals on there. Just some of that type of stuff that goes and actually makes you say, ha, yes, this is a spy movie. I like it. We have that expectation. Of course, we want to go ahead and actually have some lighthearted, like little moments between the two. It makes it uh, comical. It makes it whimsy. It kind of gives you that sparks flying between like the two lead actors. And it kind of makes it, it gives you that extra little layer on top. It's kind of like the icing on the cake type of deal, right? And... I honestly, I expect because of the leads that are in here, it's not that they're not the prototypical, like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie were, you know, the quintessential Hollywood heartthrob types of types of people here, right? So my expectation was probably with Donna Glover and, and Maya, we're going to be a, probably a little bit of a different angle, a little different take on it. And I, I expect that. So I can go into that with, with that expectation and kind of, hey, leave room for it to go ahead and actually go somewhere that you think it might not go. So that's my expectations. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually give you my review after I've watched the first two episodes. So after watching the first two episodes, first and foremost, I always go ahead and give you where I think I'm, uh, I can go ahead and actually quantify this to kind of give you a frame of reference. I'm going to say that this series is kind of like if the writers of like Quantico or Covert Affairs tried to go ahead and actually interject and, and do their own version of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So if you've ever seen those types of uh, spy and espionage movies or anything like that or series, and then you see Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that's kind of like where I'm going with it as far as the bleeding in. And you'll kind of see where I'm going with that. But let me give you my thoughts on the first couple episodes. So just bullet points here. Um, first, uh, first episode, the opening scene uh, in the first episode actually kind of seemed to be like an homage to the 2005 movie and I can't I don't want to spoil anything so I'm not going to but it seemed to be kind of like an homage and also a way to go ahead and actually tie that movie into this series 
and I don't have anything that's just my thought process on there. I'm probably going to look up some other reviews to see if they kind of have a similar type of thought process, but that was my thought for the initial opening scene. Uh, second is there was kind of like an interview process for both of the main leads where it kind of leaves a vehicle for them to kind of narrate their own introduction to us as the viewer. And hmm, not sure if that wouldn't actually work, but that's kind of way that they went introducing us to them. Uh, the first mission scene in uh, in the restaurant kind of went long and was kind of awkward. Not sure what was going on there and, and where that thought process went. So, um, this is your first time in New York? Should we be asking each other that? What? There, now, now round about when there's like 15 minutes left in that first episode, the series started to become the pace that I was looking for when I tuned into this. And so I started to kind of get into it a little bit or what have you. And then the episode just kind of flat. It just like, ah, just landed and just was kind of weird. And then there was some uh, post credit scene. And by post credit scene, it would actually just give you a preview of the rest of the season. And that was actually good and it's probably needed to get people to want to watch the second episode. So uneven, kind of a little bit of roller coaster in that first episode. Second episode, there was a neighbor scene in the beginning that was kind of awkward, a little weird. I know what they were trying to do there, but it just, ah, just, just weird. Um, and then there was actually a few scenes with John Turturro in there in the second episode that were fun and interesting and kind of, you know, give you a different perspective on this whole series. I'm scared. And I just kind of give you those bullet points in my my impressions of those first two episodes, kind of let you know what's to be expected, what are like some general thoughts that I have, but not spoiling anything for you because I don't want to do that. Just kind of give you some impressions of, ah, uh, that's how I kind of felt. So, to go ahead and actually give you an idea of why I came up with the rating that I did in the very beginning of this video is I rate things on three different things. So I go ahead and actually give grades to storytelling and just like basically the story, the concept, pacing, sensibility, realism, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, second part is like the acting, you know, do they make me believe it? Was the casting good? Was the dialogue? You know, all that kind of good stuff that it kind of, you know, does that draw you in? And then lastly, like intangibles, things that you can't quite put your hands around and, and, and can't quantify, but they're the things that kind of make you tune in or tune out of a series. So those are the grades that I go and actually have story for Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, well, the concept, the concept of Mr. and Mrs. Smith is solid. It can be fun. You're talking about uh, two people that are spies who are married and, you know, kind of like everything that goes along with that. Uh, and in this particular series, they've chosen to go ahead and actually go the route of they know that each other are spies. Whereas, spoiler alert, in the 2005 one, they don't know that they're spies. They're both spies. They're independent. They work for separate companies or what have you. And, you know, then all of a sudden they go and actually find out that they are spies and, and that creates a whole nother issue or what have you. But in here, they kind of go into this knowing that they're spies. So totally different angle, right? Um, and obviously that could go and actually work if it's done right. It, but I'm just going to be honest, it just doesn't work in this particular series, not how they were recruited, um, you know, how we're kind of being given their characters and kind of force fed of who they are and uh, what drives them, all that kind of stuff, the way that they've kind of crammed it down our throats without you know, allowing us to see who they are, things like that. It's just very clunky storytelling for me. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's any fun or romance in here, and it doesn't doesn't lend itself to go and actually be believable. Now, you could kind of say that in this particular world, they're a little bit more of, not say everyday people, but they're not like the super spies like uh, Brad and Angelina, uh, Angelina were in the first one. But at the same time, that's why we tune in is for the spy stuff, the all that kind of stuff. And to see them kind of grow into it, um, it just didn't feel organic it, it just felt very cumbersome and, and, and various different things um and then honestly it was very slow at some points like there's sometimes when you're just like oh my goodness it, are we still watching a spy movie or still watching a spy series or what have you so just a lot of concerns there um so for storytelling i'm giving it a d plus yeah it's a little great for me um as far as the acting so donald glover i know can do comedy I know that he can do seriousness. He can do various different things. He's got a pretty good range or what have you. Um, I did not like him as John Smith. He's not convincing as a spy. He's not convincing that 
he's some type of badass, low key or anything like that. There's just kind of this aloofness, this detachment that he rolls with on there. And yeah, it just is not, it's, it's not great. Uh, Have you ever killed anyone? No, 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 not really. Really? No. And then now I wasn't familiar with, uh, Maya Erzneski's, uh, her previous performances the when leading on reading her uh filmology and things like that i think i the only thing i've seen of hers that i would have known her in was she appeared in three episodes of obi-wan kenobi on disney she didn't stand out to me couldn't couldn't have picked her out of a lineup or what have you so she was not anything extraordinary for me in that and unfortunately she didn't better that perception here her and donald do not convince me as spies they don't convince me as a couple even worse um there's no sparks there's no nothing there for it they kind of take this very much of <clears throat> they kind of take this approach of kind of like being i know this isn't going to be a popular opinion with everybody but they kind of take this either awkward of like I don't care what's kind of going on here type of approach to it. It's just a job type of thing. And maybe that's annoying. Or maybe it's kind of like this whole little deference to like a little bit like an incel type of deal. And if you know anything about the whole that incel thing on there, you could go look that up yourself. But they both kind of approach it as like incels. And it's just as if they're just kind of very much detached from the whole uh being married thing and uh be just they approach relationships weird um yeah overall the acting i did not believe for those two I, I so you didn't mean it no i do that's cool i honestly do think though watching john Totoro's character and his scenes that he had in the second episode and then seeing the um the upcoming uh trailer post scene whatever you want to say after the end of the first one and they're going to have various different uh characters come come through it intertwine within their story i think that those characters are going to make the series watchable for people and they're going to outshine the two main lead actors which is not what you want but i kind of have a feeling that 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 would be the case for them going forward um just based off of john tutorial's thing and then looking at the trailer that's kind of how i feel is going on there because for me overall right now what i would go ahead and actually give the acting in mr and mrs smith is a c and that's me being generous that's me kind of extrapolating what i think the other people bring to it but overall i'm going to give it a c the intangibles in this particular series um they definitely did go and actually take a different take than the previous incarnation so i'll give them that that they actually took a little bit of a chance going a different way uh, kind of like they're kind of showing like how the romance was started and all that kind of stuff um not sure i could go and actually call myself a fan of it but they, they took a they took a chance there's no real action in the first two episodes there's some spy stuff in there as far as communication and things like that but nothing that would grab you in as a uh, spy enthusiast or anything like that there's probably like three to four good scenes within the first two episodes and i say that as an intangible because you can hold on to like there's at least a few decent scenes in there where you can either get a little bit of smile or you get a little bit intrigued or what have you at least for me that's kind of like what you have to kind of look forward to but there's not a whole lot of like there's not a whole lot of various different things to go and actually glob onto in order to kind of really feel this movie and, and, and kind of give you that that type of vibe. So for intangibles for this series, I'm going to go and actually give it a C minus. Okay. But now that I've kind of given you all the rundown again, let me just go ahead and actually solidify why I'm giving it a verdict of a one episode watch for both mains and casuals now for our main audience members the reason why i'm saying watch one episode is because there's some positives the first scene is actually i i think it actually is a pretty smooth way to go and actually pay homage to uh the the 2005 movie in my estimation i believe that's what it is and i think that might come up later into the series which i would be intrigued if it does in some kind of way shape or form so i think there's there's room for that to hang your hat on as a main viewer um i think there are some few lines between john and jane as they're getting to know each other that's actually kind of fun um a little playful and things like that especially in the first episode to kind of get you into that aspect of it um 
the house that they live in is dope. I really like that. Um, it's in New York and it's, you can tell like it's an expensive house, especially for New York or what have you. So I like the house on there. Um, and the, the last 15 minutes of the first episode and the scenes after that, after the post credit scenes are kind of like a good window shot into like, oh, okay, this is what I have to look forward to in the series. So that's why I say watch that first episode if you are a main August a main target audience member for casuals i will go ahead and actually say because like unlike the the target audience um you're kind of watching for like something with like a quirky attitude or a different take on this free uh franchise and a reimagining what have you and they de definitely deliver that i think it is quirky attitudes i think this is made for someone who has a different thought process than myself not like a main uh mr and mrs smith enthusiast not a big spy thriller type of thing maybe just because of having that uh different awkward offbeat kind of humor and maybe that's where a, a casual person that's into that type of that gets that kind of character development may really go ahead and actually like this particular series and i say it's at least you could tell that they were trying to go and actually make a good series here and i think it's worth a casual viewer to go and actually watch it to see if they like it so oh, you you're like sitting baby. underneath a shelter i made oh, i made this fire i got you this fish shelter, food fire water no maybe <clears throat> so again my verdict for everybody watch the first episode of mr and mrs smith and see if it's for you and that's what i have go ahead and actually check it out on prime video what do you think happens if we fail our marriage our mission and he'll be there. you stay for the entire review i appreciate you if you haven't noticed Got new equipment right here and got this uh, Blue Yeti for Christmas and I'm loving it. Like it is hopefully y'all go ahead and actually like it in there. Give me some comments down below um, in the comment section on here. Also do me a favor, watch some of these other videos. I'm gonna start uploading again on there. It's been a while, um, but I appreciate you going and actually stay on, on with me. Uh, like and subscribe. Gonna start getting back into going and actually posting the reviews again. But until next time I see you, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.